I'm seeking a cremation when I pass and you know that's worth a lot of money so I just didn't want to have that burden on my children. Nigana traditional owner Vanessa Polina is clear about what she wants to happen when she passes away. My reasoning for signing up to ACBF was so that I could lay by my cremation. Um, I want to be put to sea with my dad and my brother who rest off entrance point here in Broome. Ms Polina signed up to the Aboriginal Community Benefit Fund, now known as UPLA, more than two decades ago, paying more than $20,000 for funeral cover for herself and her family. Are you running the workshop or are you a participant? We've been designing an Indigenous one. Oh, good on you. Oh, that's awesome, mate. But she stopped paying premiums in February on the advice of her local financial counsellor after one of the group's four funds went into administration and there were growing concerns about the viability of the remaining funds. I was really apprehensive to stop paying because I just felt like, oh, no, nah, certainly not, you know, that, you know, they've got our money, like, how can they be going broke? Then, on the 9th of March, just two days before the entire Eupla group went into liquidation, the company asked her for payment. If you do wish for your Fund One benefits to be available, you will need to ensure that you remain financial and that regular payments recommence. Well, I think that behaviour absolutely warrants a very, very bright spotlight on the issue of directors trading while insolvent. That same day, the corporate watchdog ASIC wrote to the company asking it to clarify its financial position for customers. It also reminded directors of their duties, including the prohibition on insolvent trading. We applied the rules of insolvency to our company and no, we were not trading insolvent. My sole driving um, ambition and that of uh, my fellow director was the protection of the members. That's all we cared about. Come here, boy. Speaking publicly for the first time, Director Greg Wielden says an ambitious plan to consolidate all four funds would have saved the company from collapse. But he says the corporate watchdog ASIC didn't approve the plan. All the documents had been done, had been drafted. Um, it just needed goodwill and a desire by the regulators to protect these shareholders. Um, I find it amusing that everyone is now looking at technical breaches of insolvent trading. The plan would have needed agreement from all of the 14,500 members, regulator approval, creditor approval, a reinsurer and an Australian financial services licence. The company had none of those things. On March the 10th, Mr Wilden says he was told regulators wouldn't approve the restructure and the entire Eupla group collapsed. ASIC won't comment on events leading up to the liquidation or on the allegation it wouldn't work with the company to resolve the situation. It was a di very disappointing result for me personally that we couldn't um, save the company. So all I can uh, say is, no, I don't regret it. I just wish I could have been helpful in getting a better result for the company and its members. Last month, 7.30 revealed co-founder and long-time director Ron Pattenden had set up a reinsurance company for ACBF in Vanuatu in the early 2000s and owns a luxury boat and a waterfront apartment in New Zealand. I really you, want to get a short statement from you. give me some more time. Mr Pattenden sold the company shortly after it was grilled at the 2018 Banking Royal Commission and declined an interview when 7.30 approached him. I believe that probably is a matter the regulator should look at closely and, if possible, retrieve some money for the pool of the Aboriginals and tip it back into the funds, if, if, if there is a case. 
An explosive Liquidators report released on Friday says companies controlled by or associated with Ron Pattenden were paid dividends worth almost $12 million from ACBF, including to a hospitality business in Vanuatu. It's not known who received another $7 million in dividends. The liquidator also says $41 million was sent to an underwriting company associated with Mr Pattenden, Crown Insurance Services, and it made a surplus of $23 million after paying out funeral claims to customers. I am investigating whether this arrangement is a breach of the director's duties pursuant to section 180 to 184 of the Act. The liquidator also says it's investigating whether various directors of the company may have breached their duties, which can carry large penalties. Since 7.30 fronted Ron Pattenden last month, he has not responded to further questions, including to the allegations in the liquidator's report. ASIC has also confirmed it's investigating past and current directors, and Mr Pattenden is understood to be one of the main directors of interest. There's all of these court processes, they go on for years, and at the end of it, the little people get nothing. I've seen it time and time and again, and I have zero hope that this will be any different. What our policyholders want is a refund. They want to see a fund established by the government because this was a massive regulatory failure by a government body, ASIC. In the meantime, customers like Vanessa Polina are left without funeral cover. It's real mixed emotions, you know, like you kind of want to feel angry, then you get frustrated and then you feel sad because now you're, you know, you know the cost burden is going to be on your family to look for money for your cremation. <laughs> you know, like, and then other parts you just kind of like, as we do as Aboriginal people, you kind of laugh off this sort of stuff, but it is really disheartening. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.